foot drop. It's a drag. See what I did there? <laughs> Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and this is Even So, It Is Well. I recently received a comment from a viewer. Megan Sloth wrote, your videos are so informative and also relaxing. Well, thanks, Megan. I'd be interested in you going into more depth on foot issues, foot drop, pain, etc. Any and all foot symptoms. Thanks. Megan Sloth, this one's for you. Foot drop, or drop foot as it's sometimes called, was my first discernible MS symptom. In today's video, I'm going to talk about MS foot drop and other symptoms and why they happen and how we can deal with them. Foot drop can be caused by muscle problems, nerve injury, or brain and spinal cord disorders. In MS, it's caused by brain or spinal cord lesions, which can lead to weakness in the ankle, numbness, altered sensation in the foot or leg, or spasticity, all of which can contribute to foot drop. In addition to MS, other conditions that may cause foot drop are strokes and ALS and some others. Foot drop is when we can't lift our foot properly during a step. We can't pull our foot up or we can't hold it up. When this happened to me, it came on over a weekend and it varied in how much it affected my foot. Sometimes I'd be walking and my foot would just slap down. It would literally slap, go slap, slap, slap. People could hear me coming. Other times, my foot would not lift high enough and my toes would drag and catch on the ground and I would trip and stumble. At the time, it was very concerning and I'm sure I was quite the sight staggering around. I now completely understand the t-shirts that say, I'm not drunk, I have MS. Foot drop can be the cause of balance issues, tripping, falling, and generally being insecure about walking. But there's good news. There are ways that we can treat foot drop. Disclaimer time. I am not a doctor or a physical therapist. I'm just a girl sharing her thoughts on living well with chronic illness. Please speak with your healthcare professional of choice about any treatment for foot drop or your chronic illness symptoms. If foot drop is part of an MS relapse, Treating the relapse with steroids may help quell the inflammation quicker so the nerve can heal and function may return. You may also heal naturally after a relapse and function may return then too. I had IV steroids while in the hospital for a few days. It took several weeks for full function to return and in that time I started doing yoga and balance exercises as a way to help me get my strength and balance back. Electrical stimulation is another option. Functional electrical stimulation, FES, works by causing dorsiflexion and it stimulates the common perineal nerve, which causes the foot to pull up towards our shin. According to this study, patients experienced statistically significant increases in walking speed and walking distance. It concluded that these devices are an effective long-term solution to foot drop. Hooray! In another study, they found the importance of ensuring our posture is also correct when using the FES devices. If you and your doctors decide that FES is for you, you might want to ask about getting some physiotherapy to check your posture to ensure you're getting the best outcomes. It turns out our parents were right all along when telling us not to slouch. Ankle and foot orthosis, or AFOs, they are assistive devices that can help with foot drop. They are worn around the leg and heel and fit into the shoe to help reduce foot drop or around the shin and attached to the shoe. In this study, they found they were as helpful as FES if perhaps you don't fancy electrical stimulation of your nerves. AFOs, like FES devices, can improve gait, fatigue, and confidence in walking, and they can decrease trips and falls. Both devices are great options to help with foot drop, but some find the devices cumbersome, uncomfortable, inconvenient, and they come with some psychological barriers to their use. Let's face it, they're not very pretty. 
but I have seen some in amazing colors. So you can find one that matches your style. I will put some links in the description below if you want to check them out. Lastly, physical therapy is a wonderful option to help with foot drop. I recently did an interview with Dr. Gretchen Hawley where she shared how beneficial PT can be, and I will put a link above and in the description below to that interview. In part, she shared how functional exercise can help build strength and new neural pathways to improve and overcome def deficits we experience from RMS. When researching for this video, I found this report of an MS patient that experienced an 80% improvement in his dorsiflexor strength using contralateral strength training before his direct strength training. Contralateral strength training is where they focus the training only on the side that is affected. Once that side shows improvement, then they move to direct strength training, which can improve both sides. Because MS is a snowflake disease where we all have it differently, PT will take varying amounts of time before you see results. It could be weeks, months, or years, but keep at it. The more you do it, the more your brain will work on new neural pathways. There are many resources online to help with PT. Two that I'm familiar with and that I like are the MS Gym and Dr. Gretchen Hawley, and I will put links in the description below to both of them. Some other issues I touched on earlier were numbness, weakness, and altered sensation, and I will also add pain. These are all things that I have experienced. I have what I call my baseline, and that's numbness all the time that affects the outer two toes of my left foot and the ball of my left foot. Some things that can change my foot symptoms and MS symptoms overall are overheating, overdoing it, being overtired, overindulging in making poor food choices, and being overstressed. Sometimes I'm just over it, but what's a girl to do? I need to be more mindful of the causes and I need to plan ahead. If it's gonna be hot, I need to make plans to stay cool. I hydrate, I use cooling towels and neck wraps, or I alter my plans so I can minimize the heat. Overdoing it at the gym or on my hikes happens frequently. As I know I'm not causing permanent damage, I often just push through it. The numbness increases, the weakness increases, and there can be some pain and muscle spasms. Sometimes it can feel like I have blisters on the bottom of my foot. I have had to learn my limits through trial and error, and there have been quite a few frustrating days. But I've also learned to be gentle with myself because getting frustrated only hurts me, and it probably makes the problems worse. Getting overtired is one that I have been working on a lot this year. I'm not talking about MS fatigue, but self-induced lack of sleep and rest. I now keep a consistent bedtime and practice good sleep hygiene habits, like no screens in the bedroom, meditative breathing exercises, stretching, and taking my back lump in when I need so I can get a good night's rest. Overindulging and making poor food choices. Does this happen to you? <laughs> Drop me a comment below if it does. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor by hitting the like button, the thumbs up under the video. This helps my channel in the YouTube algorithms and it helps others to find these videos. I'm eating a whole food plant-based diet to help manage my MS, but I occasionally slip up and I put on a few pounds or I eat something that's plant-based, but maybe not so whole food. Our bodies want to be healthy and providing them with the best nutrition we can is super important. So I have occasionally had to give myself a pep talk or a stern talking to, Vicki, eat like you give a damn. Stress, this is a big one. Our bodies create stress hormones to help us in times of acute stress, like being chased by a bear or when we have an urgent deadline. These hormones are great to help us escape or focus on getting the job done. They're not so good in the long term. If we have these hormones flowing through us all the time, it can cause a lot of health problems, including flares of our symptoms. To combat this, I recommend the clean living, good loving philosophy. 
Clean living includes diet, meditation, and exercise. Good loving includes relationships. It is really important to have people you love. It can be friends, family, partners, church community, or an MS support group. Find your tribe and love them hard. And don't forget your furry or scaled friends too. My relationships with my pets are fantastic stress reducers. Our current lot of pets includes Lincoln the Wonder Dog, Nim the One-Eyed Cat, and Bob the Beardy. They all add a lot of fun and love to our lives and definitely reduce stress. Megan Sloth, thanks so much for the question. I hope you found this video helpful. My questions of the day are what other topics would you like to see me make videos on and what other tips do you have for foot drop and foot symptoms? Thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and ring the notif notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Until next time, be well.